Ignition sequence starts. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. Hey everybody, this is the Digital Asset Investor. <clears throat> I wanted to ra remind everybody that just announced yesterday, Greg Kidd is now coming to XRP Las Vegas. He's running for, I guess he's running for Senate. In, um, it's uh, Kidd for, K-I-D-D, KiddForNevada.com. And he's running for Senate. So now we got John Deaton and, um, and Greg Kidd. So you got two senatorial candidates that are going to be at XRP Las Vegas. Um, the I talked to Brad Combs and the tickets are selling really fast. You can look in the description of this video if you want a um, if you'd like a discount, go to daixrp.com and join my group because you're going to want to see what's in my group today anyway. Trust me on that. Um, Watch this. this. This is a billionaire, Thomas Kaplan. He's talking about Bitcoin and the game that is Bitcoin. Watch. What you will see is a stealth breakout that people will not really be noticing that a bottom was put in. And then the way that, you know, the markets work, once people see that something is performing, they want to buy it and people very rarely buy something that's truly depressed and represents value because they're afraid uh, they see it as buying a falling knife now the great investors of the world like Warren Buffett um, or Lee Kai Shang and you know some others you know they looked for falling knives they did their analysis and they said is that justified or are people just running in the opposite direction, in which case I'm going to load up the truck. And that in turn creates its own virtuous circle. I mean, it's just a truism that in the financial world, unlike the real physical world where people buy more of something when it's cheaper, in the financial world, people need the ratification of the auction process that are the financial markets in order to see that other people are buying too. And then when things start to outperform, they then want to get in on the action because mm, people have of a course, fear of missing out. Of course, FOMO. When it's actually the opposite that you do. This is how I, the way I end up. I love how everybody's talking about Bitcoin while I accumulate more XRP. I love it. And exactly. gold. So, most people would rather lose money in conjunction with other people and buy something that's overvalued because of FOMO and then watch it go down because they're afraid to sell it lest it goes back up and it shows their neighbor to have been more prescient uh, than he they. He just summed it up. He just summed it up so nicely. There's a reason that they're focusing everybody on Bitcoin. While many focus, these black swan capitalist guys, I love them, they're smart. While many focus on the hype of artificially inflated assets, smart investors are buying the lows of gold and digital assets like XRP and tips anticipating future demand. 1,000%. Now, the guys over at Ripple were pissed yesterday afternoon. You could tell it. Look at these tweets. First, James Philan puts this out. SEC has filed under seal its opening remedies related brief and supporting documents. These documents are not public yet. Public redacted versions will be filed no later than Tuesday, March 22nd. Stuart Alderati, as you will see, when the SEC's brief is made public tomorrow, they ask the judge for $2 billion in fines and penalties. Our response will be filed next month, but as, as we have all seen time and time again, this is a regulator that trades in statements that are false, mischaracterized, and de designated to mislead. They stayed true to form here. Rather than faithfully apply the law, the SEC remains bent on wanting to punish and intimidate Ripple and the industry at large. We trust the court will approach the remedies phase fairly. Folks, I'm going to show you in my group, these guys take it real personal. 
Then Brad Garlinghouse, Gensler's SEC, has repeatedly acted outside the law, not going unnoticed by judges admonishing the agency for a gross abuse of power entrusted to it by Congress, the debt box case, and for acting without faithful allegiance to the law, Ripple case. Let's not also forget Gensler's lack of attention to SB fraud. Gensler can't talk about Sam Bankman Freed. Where are those meeting notes when Gary Gensler was having planning sessions with Sam Bankman Freed? We're not finished with that yet. He goes on, the SEC plans to ask the judge for $2 billion in a case that involved no allegations, let alone findings of fraud or recklessness. There is absolutely no precedent for this. We will continue to expose the SEC for what they are when we respond. And then even Chris Larson came in. Gensler's SEC has become unhinged. This will not and should not go unnoticed in an election year as the SEC single-handedly thinks it's above the law, dragging the U.S. further behind other G20 countries. Then um, Jeremy Hogan comes in and he says, Summer of SEC's remedies brief. How dare Ripple not grovel before us? Um, instead of addressing some real legal issues, it came across as petty and vindictive, punctuated by ex posts as evidence. It had an opportunity to take the lead on some legal issues and didn't, in my opinion. Um, then Mr. Huber is making some excellent points here. Look at this. This is absolutely ridiculous. The SEC settled with Block One on their $4 billion ICO for $24 million. They raised $4 billion in an illegal ICO, which Ripple did not even have, and they settled with the SEC for $24 million. Like John Deaton said from the very beginning of this case, it was the case, the case itself. Dropping the case itself was the weapon. That's why Jeff, that's why Jay Clayton, Bill Hinman, and Mark Berger, and, and several others all left, because the mission was to get Ethereum the free pass and then drop the Ripple case and leave. Because your mission was done then. The case itself, tying up, them up in court for all these years, was the weapon. Mr. Huber makes another great point. The SEC wants Ripple to pay a third of all fines that all companies in the world combined paid to the SEC last year. 2023 enforcement, 494 949 billion in financial remedies in fiscal year 2023 second only to the to the commission's record breaking 2022 in 2023 the sec reco recovered over twice as much in disgorgement see you got to understand this arrogant egocentric guy this is what gary gensler wants he wants he he wants ripple to be his trophy on the wall see i got the largest i got the largest penalty on record. That's what Gary wants. But the lawsuit itself was the weapon. They wanted to tie Ripple up in court for all these years. Then Gary gets to hold the trophy over his head, the biggest fine in history. That's what kind of what I think. But here's the little problem. Who has benefited from Ripple being this American company, Ripple being tied up? You know, this American company who has created a new payment system, which could have dominated the world easily, still will in my opinion, but who would have benefited most? Who has been developing their CBDC and now creating their payment system while Ripple's been tied up in a lawsuit? Who's been doing that? Well, that would be China and Russia. Jimmy Valley was on, um, was on, I always forget how to say his uh, show's name, Crypto for Life, 68J. Um, go give him a subscribe. I'll actually, when I get done, I'll drop the link to the video here. But he had Jimmy Valley on yesterday. And Jimmy Valley makes some ver a very valid point here. You know, who could really be pulling the strings on this uh, to make, um, you know, a federal agency uh, go after this company, cause all this market uncertainty, risk their reputations and their careers to do so right. we're talking this could you know depending on certain facts if it is the case that say china 
was paying these people indirectly to basically do that. Right. That's treason, right? I mean, so this is this is not yeah. like little kid stuff we're talking about. That's right. It's the type of stuff that would have given you a pretty major pause. It would have taken me a lot more than $15 million to compromise my if, if, it, if, it, if it was you and I, uh, we probably would have got thrown in the back of the van with Steven as well. <laughs> Yes, 100%. In fact, I mean, I, these events I'm about to tell you about, I, I walked around my house and you know, I, I got a good story about that. Whoa. Um, okay. And then I wanted to show you this. Boring Sleuth keeps teasing that he's, that he's found somebody who, um, let's see, there's no bigger disrespect motivation to us to be infiltrated, lied to, and deceived the truth is our answer. And then he had also tweeted out a video, Secret Agent Man. He said this is the theme of today. He said this yesterday. So I want to know who who is the secret agent. Let us know. Let's name some names. Let's get it over with. Now we're going to go into DAIXRP.com and I'm going to show you. Man, there are not many of you in the XRP community that are not in the SEC um, in their documentation i'm going to go over some of that i'm the digital asset investor i'm not an investment advisor this is for entertainment purposes only please subscribe hit the like button tell your friends and family here we go